nailed it. If I can flip this, you have to subscribe right now. Dang it. <clears throat> Hi, this is Brad with Copper Creek Cuts, a lawn care company in Northeast Florida. If you're wondering why I'm dressed like Prison Mike, I'm Prison Mike! It's because I'm bald and I have no hair to catch my sweat. Today's yard isn't too bad. Let's take a look. So generally on overgrown yards, the first thing I like to do is uh, to, to, <laughs> to do is edge the driveway. And what that does is it gets all that edging debris at a spot where the mower can chop it up. Now this driveway looks relatively good. The cracks are really the only issue. Now things like these, if you want to stand out, take care of them. I know a lot of uh, local companies that I'll drive past yards they service and the crack between the asphalt and the curb they'll just leave but if you just take your string trimmer and eat that up real quick you waste some of your line of course because it gets chewed up by the concrete but it looks a lot better and I mean it's not a permanent fix you'll have to do it every week but it only takes a couple of seconds and it does make it look a lot nicer. So that's one tip you can do. So to edge, I'm using this PAS 2620, which is basically a power head with a straight shaft edger attachment. This is the same one Echo gave me in, I think, 2017. So this thing's, what, five, five years old almost? I probably use it two to three days a week, about eight or nine months a year. Still cranks up good as new. The only issues I've ever had is... I fouled a couple of spark plugs on a tank of gas, and I think that was my fault because I mixed it too rich. A washer that wore out here and the, the drivetrain would fall out, but I fixed that with a very small piece. So, here we are again. I hope you've had a good week. I think last week's video I had so many audio issues and YouTube upload issues I didn't get it up until Sunday. So, thank you for your patience on that. So this week's video, I want to do a little less rambling. A lot of people said they liked it, but I don't know. I got way off topic from the project at hand. So first, when it comes to edging, uh, there are a lot of people who only use string trimmers, which, I mean, that's fine if you want to do that. I don't want to seem like I'm coming across, like I'm saying you cannot edge with a string trimmer. But generally speaking, using an edger is safer. You see the thick metal guard, there's a, also a black rubber flap at the back end where everything shoots out. When you use a string trimmer, especially a lot of professionals that take the, uh, the debris guard off, it is just not as safe as an edger. Those string trimmers can pick up rocks and fling them all the way across a yard or a street, and it's just not quite as safe as using an edger. The edging on this yard wasn't terrible probably been a few weeks since it was done last but it was pretty satisfying seeing that that edge come out i i don't know if this is some kind of uh maybe a zoysia or a centipede grass i'm not great at identifying those two i know what bermuda looks like i know what saint augustine looks like i know what weeds look like and that's that's pretty much 80 percent of the yards i run into or some combination of those three uh but oh behay is another big one i run into uh, but at least this stuff doesn't doesn't have anything that creeps too much like St. Augustine or weeds that are really growing across the cracks. The straight shaft edger, sometimes folks will ask uh, why I use that versus a curved. It's, I mean, it's not like it's world's better, but the fact that it doesn't have a curve, it does mean that you have a little bit better visibility because you're like looking straight down it versus offset. But the bigger reason is that it takes up less space side to side, which means it's a little bit easier to get into places like, uh, you know, if somebody's parked two cars abreast on a driveway and you've only got two inches between the tire and the grass, it can be easier to fit that straight shaft in. It's also, you know, easier to carry since it's straight.
Yeah, that bed's full of lava rocks. I'm not touching that. The edger would have had a field day with those things. That's another thing I'll generally tell folks is, hey, you know, when I'm stopping by, I'm mainly taking care of the lawn. Anything that's a landscape bed, that's that's separate. Unfortunately, that would be, you know, more work. Or Usually I'll make that clear in the estimate. So like when I came by to give this person an estimate in the notes or the comment section, I let, I just say, hey, to be clear, this section is not going to be maintained because that's considered landscaping. But yeah, you, you would not. Well, you could pay me enough to edge a bed full of landscape rock, but it would have to be a lot. So they were just interested in getting the lawn taken care of, so most of the time the people don't care. So this is a water meter box. Generally there's two of them and the one on the left, uh, you see me almost fall in it there. Something happened, they must have had it ran over or just demolished by somebody else who mowed or something. But So basically it's just a pit. I, I couldn't really edge around it so I just decided to string trim as best I could. And then we move on to the mowing. So I believe I'm mowing at three inches in height. Uh, a lot of people like to give their advice on mowing heights and whether or not I'm scalping things or I should have cut it shorter or I should have cut it taller. When you're cutting tall grass, so this, this front yard isn't really that bad. I wouldn't consider this tall grass. But um, when you're cutting tall grass, you can't really worry about what you're supposed to be cutting the grass at, right? Like, one of the general rules of thumb is to cut no more than one-third of the height of the grass. So that might work great if your grass is four inches tall and you want to cut it. All right, well, I'm not going to take more than about an inch off, right? An inch and a quarter, however specific your machine gets. That's about as much as I'm going to take off. But when the grass is 18 inches tall, there are no mowers that mow 12 inches high. So yeah, you're going to take more than a third off and it's going to look yellow and brown because all the chlorophyll is at the top two feet of grass, you know, not the bottom three inches. So a lot of times, you know, when people chime in about uh, how, how tall things should be, I think generally they just don't have a ton of experience cutting tall grass and knowing that that's just what it's going to look like. And in a couple weeks, it's going to be fine. The whole thing is going to be green again. It's not a big deal. It's a little bit like that you can't make an omelet without breaking some eggs or it's going to look worse before it looks better. You know, whatever kind of cliche or saying you want to throw in there. Sometimes people ask, well, like this, I, I back up and mow in one direction. That eliminates turning. If I can just back up, then I don't have to do a three-point turn. And if I'm only mowing, you know, a four or five-foot strip, uh, it just makes sense to back up and go forward again rather than spend five, ten seconds doing a three-point turn just to make another four or five-foot pass. Yeah, see how short this time? I, I couldn't even tell where I had been at this point. Like The, <laughs> the lines in the sun, I couldn't see. Like, have I mowed that spot? I don't know. I don't see grass growing. That's the only bad thing about uh, when grass is not very tall is it's a lot harder to see where you have or haven't cut. So this client is going to be a weekly. This was the initial cleanup, obviously, and then we'll get them on a weekly schedule. It's a little bit out of the way, but I also picked up another weekly right down the street from them, and then I have about five houses in this neighborhood that are on bi-weekly or every other week. So at least every other week I was already in the neighborhood, uh, so I didn't mind adding a weekly because one of the weeks I was already going to be there, and the other week uh, it is going to take probably an extra seven or eight minutes of drive time to get in that neighborhood, 
but I've got two that are within a minute of each other in that neighborhood, so it's not the worst thing in the world. I have focused a lot over the past year on my route density, which if you've never heard that term before, I mean, it's just what it sounds like. My mowing route is dense. So instead of having one client five miles to the west and then three clients five miles to the east and then two clients seven miles to the north and one client six miles you know you get the idea instead i have 10 clients all within a mile of each other and what that's going to do is eliminate you wasting a quarter of your day driving right because you don't get paid when you're driving you're burning fuel so you're costing time or costing fuel i guess but you are also costing time especially if you've got a helper right now it's just me so i mean I, I do have a labor rate oh look at me i'm trying to fit in the back into this gate it's not going to work <laughs> i think i needed about another five inches on the gate it's just not going to happen so we'll break out the bobcat but yeah so route density is is really what you want when it comes to mowing i think on uh, most of my mowing days i have about 35 to 40 minutes of drive time that does include uh, a neighborhood that's about 15 minutes away that I'm trying to get more clients in because it's brand new. There's a hundred and something houses and most of the people are moving from Jacksonville, which means they don't already have a lawn service. So I'm willing to drive a little bit further to try and get some density there. But for the most part, if I'm on a, a full day of mowing, I'm not spending more than 40 minutes in the truck driving, which means the other you know, seven or eight hours are actually working, which is really good. I mean, good, relatively speaking. If I say it's good, there's gonna be a hundred guys who come out of the woodwork and say, oh, I work 12 hour days and I only drive six minutes and I mow for the other, you know, so that's why I have to throw in that relatively. For me, it's good. <laughs> for what I used to do when I first started where I would drive like an hour round trip for one job, it took me three hours and I underbid horribly. Yeah, I've come a long way. I've also had a lot of people in the comments ask about the Bobcat, why I got rid of it. I didn't get rid of it. I just, between the Toro, which is 60 inches, so it's now what I do front yards on, and the uh, the green 36 inch Bobcat, there's just been a not, a, there has not been a lot of properties where I've been able to film uh, this machine because either it's a backyard and it, lots of backyards, the 36 is all that'll fit. So you just saw me point to that area. There was actually standing water under this deck. Like, I don't know if this was something that a uh, previous homeowner built themselves, but there's a huge open hole space under the deck and there's a lot of standing water. So that area is very low. And uh, I almost got, you saw the tire spinning, I almost got stuck in that spot, but thankfully got out of it. So again, I'm only mowing in one direction. Part of that is I don't want to blast the house with these wet clippings. The other part is because it's thick, I want to try and, and get them, you know, kind of in the same area so they're easier to deal with later. All this will have to be string trimmed because it's just all mud right here. So on these long straightaway shots, I'll also get a lot of people who ask why I don't stripe. Striping isn't really a big thing down here, especially if you think about a yard like this where there's going to be tons of clippings. It doesn't make sense to spend time striping it because when you're done, there's going to be a ton of clippings on it and you're not going to see the stripes. I look like I'm driving drunk here because there are, uh, what are those dog wire things? So if you don't know, you know, people will put these little yellow clips that hold a wire and that keeps your dog six or eight inches away from the fence. Oh, that wire is then electrified. I think I left that part out. And that keeps your dog away from the fence. The new homeowner, they took the wire off, but those little yellow clips are still there. And I couldn't really see where most of them were, so I just had to do some kind of wide turns, which meant some wonky driving. But anyways, why don't I do stripes? It's just, it's not something, one, that is very common down here. And two, and more importantly, this doesn't really make, to me, the best video. Like this shot right here, it looks kind of neat when everything's sped up. 
but look at how tiny I am in relation to your viewing screen. You can't really see much of the action. For a real-time shot, a lot of this is boring. Uh, and I haven't finished the editing yet, so I'm assuming what you're seeing or what I will do later is that when I am far away, I zoom in, so maybe I am closer up. But if I didn't zoom in, this is what it would look like. Look, see how far away I am? Like, this isn't entertaining to watch. You don't really... Unless you... Unless you are eating dinner or you you like this as background noise for studying because sometimes I'll do that I'll just play a video that I don't even really pay attention to but I like the noise I'll be working on my dual monitor so I've got something else going on on the other screen I'm doing that's fine for this but that's one of the main reasons I don't stripe is because striping usually means big long back and forth and that doesn't work when you're trying to film yourself and show what you're doing and just it's, I, I'd love to be proven wrong, but that's, that's what I've seen in the four and a half, how many years have I been doing this? I started April 2017, we're past April 21, so seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, that's four, four and a half years. I promise I haven't been drinking anything, I'm just that slow. This, uh, this area must be, I think I mentioned it in my commentary while I'm on the yard too, but this area must be where whoever mowed it last pushed all the clippings because it is just completely full of, of thatch and dead grass from uh, from whoever cut it before. I have to go really slow in this area too because everything is so wet, it's so thick, so tall that the uh, the bobcat and it you know all that stuff that wet stuff clogs the deck too, which makes your mower more inefficient. So it's a pretty vicious cycle where if you go on one of these super wet tall grass yards your mower productivity just it's it's like a super steep curve that eventually flat lines out but uh but you're not very efficient in cutting unless you're going to stop and scrape the deck or something which i don't really have an easy way to do that i'd have to go back to the front of the house and you know drive it up the uh the tailgate of the or the ramp of the trailer and that's just a pain and then i'd scrape out all the junk on the driveway yeah it's just it's not good so I just do the best with what I can. What else do you guys want to know? I This summer I've been using those yellow Isotune Link headphones. For a year or two I used, I can't even remember the name of their other product, but they're basically uh, earbuds that, you know, f just go in your ear canal and are kind of inside here yeah i'll put a picture up i don't know what they're called but anyways the only issue with those well there's several issues the issues with those were they were never loud enough and um what was the other issue with them it's been so long since i used oh my ears got really dirty so you know cutting in florida especially when things are drier it's just like a dust storm so my ears would just get absolutely filthy at the end of a work day which is a weird problem to even think about but it happened with those kind of earphones so they sent me these uh headphones to try out now the issues with these headphones is that i have a lot more bluetooth connection issues than i had on their other things but i don't want to blame that on them because you know bluetooth is su such a tricky thing anyways it could be the phone it could be the there's interference nearby but i do feel like i have more issues with these with this device than with the other one uh, so that's one thing it is also not very comfortable that uh that headpiece maybe it's better if you have hair but that headpiece rests really heavy on my head or you adjust it so that some of the pressure goes on your ears you know you make it a lot um, I don't know how to describe it but it's either there's a lot of pressure on your head or there's more pressure on your ears neither one is terribly comfortable so that's another reason I wear those uh, those little head coverings neck gaiters whatever you want to call them because it gives a little bit of cushion in between my scalp which has no cushion <laughs> and the uh, the top of that headset the other obvious disadvantage is I can't wear that big wide brimmed hat that you may be used to seeing me wear in older videos. Maybe I can get like a super giant one that'll fit over the, <laughs> over the headphones. That would be hilarious. I'll try and find one of those. That'd be great.
narrow side yards like this are kind of a pain and it's mainly because <laughs> I hate the comments that I might get where somebody says oh you shouldn't have blew blown that towards the house why'd you do that well it's like you know it's an eight foot wide strip I'm gonna be blown it somewhere <laughs> I can't really I can only do so much right so if uh, if something is a vinyl sided house like it's got that vinyl siding that you might be familiar with that's the main time I worry about clippings because things get stuck to it really easy but as dry as this yard was if it's stucco if it's brick you know you just go by with the blower and it'll knock all that stuff off it's really not that big a deal but for some reason when grass gets stuck on plastic vinyl it's just like a magnet it's very difficult to get rid of at least in my experience now i will say talking about the white bobcat they redid uh, some of the controls in a new version or iteration of the green machine I had. So my green uh, stand-on mower, I think I purchased that towards the end of 2017. And I want to say in 2019, when it was still green, they redid all their stand-ons to make the controls a lot smoother. And then when they turned into... Uh, the white Bobcats they did a couple more improvements but I really like this mower the controls are so smooth and buttery especially compared to like the green mower um, it's tough to compare it to the controls of a zero turn but I still prefer uh, steering this machine than even that Toro zero turn there's just something about it that it's it's really weird unless you've experienced it but it feels so smooth and buttery it's just nice to to drive it and it's got a ton of power i was trying to uh to snag a fuel injected engine because that's one of the changes that uh they made when they switched to the white machines was they added an electronic fuel injection uh, engine as opposed to a carbureted engine so I think electronic fuel injection has a lot of benefits it it's not as uh, persnickety when it comes to so this is what we're left with and if you could see a lot of the clippings from whoever mowed it last ended up here just kind of smothered the grass so this many clippings yeah it's bad so what I'm gonna try and do and I'm not gonna film it because it's not gonna be very entertaining but especially this center path here and then up against the fence. I'm going to go back over everything probably with the deck all the way up to four and a half or five and just see if I can kind of feather these out so that, you know, the sun will dry a lot of them. You can already tell just since I've cut, you can see how, you know, there's a lot, a lot of moisture that's been lost already. But uh, if there's that much, you know, the sun can't break all of it down. You see here, it's just you just got that sickly grass going through it so we're going to do everything again a couple passes at five and then we'll move on to the string trimming so anyways yeah efi or electronic fuel injection i think it's supposed to be better than carburetor but for whatever reason they didn't have uh, that one in stock so i just got a regular carburetor one hey i'm not staring a gift horse in the mouth all right oh i get so that's a uh, something i get asked about too sometimes is how to get free equipment from companies what I found in my experience is that you simply have to to offer value. So, and which is, I mean, that's how you get anybody to give you anything. That's how Walmart gets you to give them your money. But did I say that right? Oh my goodness. So they they have things that you want and you're willing to pay a certain amount for. Um, with these companies, they are willing to essentially write off the cost of the equipment they send because they feel like the exposure that it gets on on the channel the views that it gets is going to be worth it now that's going to be different for each company and the other thing to to notice too is that um i, I think a lot of people assume that i just have like companies you know ringing me right and left and saying oh brad we want to get like you know i'm i'm some kind of i don't even know what uh I can't remember Leonardo DiCaprio's character in some movie. Right? It was a great Gatsby where he just had like all kind of money and he was throwing all kind of parties. So I think it might be difficult to see. I'll try and zoom in, but hold on, I'm talking. This again. patch right here, 
that's if you just do one cut and then around here is if you cut a little off the top and a little more off the top and i think i did like three cuts so it does cut up the uh the clippings a little bit and you've got you know pieces this big now which can break down easier than pieces that are a foot long like right around there i think but i guess they think it's you know lawn care equipment all day every day but the fact of the matter is i have had very few companies reach out to me and say, hey, Brad, we want to do something with you. The amount that I've had, almost all of them have been in the past year. Uh, and, you know, if you look at the first three years of my YouTube journey or whatever you want to call it, I probably re have reached out to at least 50 companies um, and the vast majority of them I have not gotten any even kind of response from or I was able to get a meeting with them where I, you know, kind of pitched what I was looking for and they said, you know, after some consideration, they either never wrote back or they just ignored me. But yeah, so the vast majority of things that I try to work out don't. Uh, it's only recently that I've had a, a couple more for like Toro. Toro has been great. They, they're actually sending a, a brush cutter as well because I've got a super overgrown property that's not appropriate for a finish mower, at least a finish mower that you don't want destroyed. But Toro has been awesome. They've just been like, yep, that's, that's a great idea. We'll go ahead and send it out. And they, they hooked me up with uh, this, obviously the 60 inch that you saw. They've done a lot of stuff for me, so they're good to, good to work with. But essentially that's what it is, is you have to have some kind of value proposition where, you know, they're not giving it to me for nothing. Like <laughs> the reason they're giving it to me is because they feel like in the end, they'll get a better deal out of me making videos on it and me showing it on my channel and me having a video that'll be on YouTube until, you know, it's not a thing anymore than whatever they're giving up, whatever the cost of that machine is. So I don't think... I don't know. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to act like you know it's some. There's some kind of secret formula that I've cracked. I just don't. I just don't like it when people think that. Uh, basically, things are hand. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how to say this without making somebody mad. I'm sure I'm gonna make somebody mad, but I do feel like some people think things are handed to people with YouTube channels, and. I mean, if, if your definition of being handed is that they're giving it to you for nothing, yes, that's true. But at the end of the day, they're not doing it out of the kindness of their hearts. They're a business. They are thinking that in the long term it'll make them money, which, you know. So I guess the whole thing's a big cynical process, and there's nothing to be happy about if you're going to start nitpicking. But Now that being said, if you are upset that folks get uh, large ticket items for free, there is nothing to prevent you from starting your own YouTube channel and doing the same exact thing that I did. That is one of the, the great things about YouTube is that it's this, this equalizer where now anybody who has a cell phone, which is almost anyone, you can do exactly the same thing that I'm doing. So if there's something about the setup that bothers you, there's no reason why you can't say, you know what, I want a free mower, I'm going to do the same thing. The issue is that when, I think when it comes to, to doing that, um, then that's when people kind of start to see the work that's involved. And, you know, so I've been doing this for four and a half years. I think I've uploaded over 500 videos. My video editor, it has an hour log on it. And so, so the yesterday when I opened it, it said I had passed over 7,900 hours that I have used that uh, that video editor over the past four and a half years. So there's a there's a lot of work. You know, you just see one YouTube video where I'm driving a nice mower, but the reason I got that mower was 7,900 hours in a video editor plus five or six hundred hours of filming field work and you know it's just there's a little bit more that goes to it than that now at least as far as the logistics of getting free equipment how that works is it's again that's different by each company i uh bobcat 
They had uh, lots of NDAs or non-disclosure agreements we had to sign. I say we because there was a group of influencers they were working with at the same time. But we had to sign some NDAs because they were about to release or re-release the uh, Bob, green Bobcat brand as the white Bobcat brand. So we had NDAs for that and the new products that were coming out. I think I'm okay to talk about that now because everything that we were not supposed to disclose has been disclosed, so that's not a big deal. But there was a, I want to say there was a couple page contract too. Um, I th at least when they were talking to us, they made it seem like that it was going to be a long term thing. Um, and I think they really just, once the product launched, they kind of dropped the whole idea of using influencers for anything, which was unfortunate because uh, the white Bobcat company is got tons of, uh, I mean, it's a heavy construction equipment company. So you went from the green Bobcat company being, you know, a company that made mowers to it being bought by a company that made almost everything under the sun. So there was some hope that, you know, some bigger machines and opportunities would come along to, uh, to make content for you guys. Fortunately, that didn't quite work. Toro was like, they sent a one-page document that basically said, uh, don't, don't, what did they say? It was like, don't drink, don't smoke, don't curse, wear protective equipment, and we're good to go. You know, something like that. Where, where they were much more uh, relaxed about everything. So every company's a little bit different in how they'll approach uh, trading products for, for content. But again, if there was one takeaway from that whole discussion, it would be that we're not getting this equipment just because they're throwing a dartboard and our name's landing on it. You know, it's not a lottery. It's because there's a channel, there's been work that's put in, there's a value proposition where these companies are saying, we think this piece of equipment is worth whatever we're going to get. You know, however they measure that, whatever metrics they use. Now, that being said, I think if you get mad because I get mowers, there's probably not anything I say that's going to make you feel better about it. You probably just are not happy in general. <laughs> I said, see, this is the problem with this director's commentary idea that I have is now this is the second week in a row that I'm just going off on these crazy tangents that are only going to make people hate me. Like, all they're going to do is the people who already had an axe to grind with me now have uh, an axe, a hatchet, and a chainsaw to grind. It's just, uh, I just need to stick to a script. <laughs> Winging this stuff is not working. Oh, string trimmer on air conditioners always makes me nervous. Now, thankfully, this one, all the wires and the pipes were real centralized and they weren't spread out, so it was a little bit easier to clean up around it. But yeah, this, you make one wrong move and you're in for an expensive fix. Thankfully, I have never damaged an air conditioner in the uh, the five years that I've I've been in business, but maybe one day. Let's see, have I damaged anything? Oh, I did, uh, the things I have damaged, have, the people have been really cool about it or it's been so low ticket that they've offered to take care of it themselves. So I, most recently I... This is what happens if you attack tall grass, gets all wrapped up. Smashed a couple of fence panels. Uh, I was going around a curve too fast and I lost some, you know, it was wet and I lost a little bit of control on the zero turn. Smashed a couple of fence panels. But the guy was real cool about it. He was just like, nah, don't worry about it. I'll, I'll take care of it. It just overheated, and this is the battery I took out. I'm putting it in my pocket, and it's burning my leg. It's so hot. This GoPro just gets so overheated in the Florida sun. I also did the tiniest little scratch on somebody's truck once because I was trying to get real close to uh, the curb. But they were like, nah, it's an old truck. Don't worry about it. Those were more a couple of the more recent close calls. And that's an issue I've never had with the GoPro that I got, I think, in 2018. I think it might be because that one only shot 1080p. These videos that I've shot since I got a GoPro 9, I think the end of last year, um, I shoot them in 2.7K. What is that? I don't know how to say that. It's... So, you know, 1080p is high definition, 
between that and 4K is 2.7K. I guess you say 2.7K. I don't know. I don't know if a lot of people, it, you know, it's like most phones only show 1080p anyway, so I don't know if it's worth doing it. But I do think it's a lot more processing power. So I've had times where that GoPro has cut out on me and I've lost footage and, you know, especially if it's something where like I get on, I press record, I get on the mower, I go mow for five minutes and then I come back and realize, oh great, it, it shut off 10 seconds after I press record, excellent. And so this last step here, these clippings, I mean, you know, blowing them out doesn't get rid of them, but it does keep them from being giant pockets of stuff that kind of like you saw at that one spot where just it was just a solid brown mass of old clippings so just blowing it out a little bit helps some but aside from finishing off the blowing i believe the before and afters are all we have left in this video so again i'll say thank you so much for watching i really do appreciate it please give me some feedback tips content ideas whatever you want to down in the description i will read them especially since I'm going off the rails with these uh, director commentary things. I really need some guidance from you. Please help me. Uh, but anyways, thanks so much and have a good day. Bye-bye.